Hello everyone, I would like to talk about these LED strips that I found on the Express. They are a little bit different than regular LED strips because they work on 220 volt AC voltage. So you can directly connect them to mains power. I installed these LED strips in the living room which works great by the way. But I have to use this 24 volts LED dryer which is quite big and you need to plan where to put this because you cannot just install the LED strips and put it on the ceiling because it's too heavy obviously. What makes this different from regular LED strips is on the regular LED strips for example this is an RGB one you have to have a power supply or sometimes an LED driver and also even like the simplest forms do not work on the AC, you need to find some sort of driving circuitry to drive them. I found that was a little bit interesting because that would eliminate the need for power supply or LED driver and you can just plug them in directly to the AC circuitry. I bought a few of them and this one is 4000 Kelvin and other one is 65000 Kelvin but they work more or less similar and actually the circuitry is quite simple on them. They only have one voltage rectifier and some resistors on them. So you can actually cut them from these points and use them in your projects. Of course, you should be cautious about using this because basically mains voltage directly passes through these LED strips and you shouldn't touch it right away if you don't want to get a nice zap. But I think it might be still okay to use them inside locations where you cannot actually touch. For example, on the ceilings or in enclosed surfaces. But we need to verify it because I would like to see how much heat these LED strips are producing. So let's investigate that. Circuitry on this is pretty straightforward and quite simple. Nothing really can go wrong electrically. We only have one bridge rectifier and 12 LEDs and we have three 4.3 kilo ohm resistors. So obviously we cannot adjust the brightness of the LEDs because it is powered directly from the mains. Apart from changing the AC voltage of course. But well, these LED strips are not designed for that. If you are looking for LED strips which you can adjust the brightness, you shouldn't go for these ones. So I connected it to a cable here and I am just connecting it to a power meter. I want to see how much power it will draw and let me just open it. And the color is quite nice and it might flicker on the screen but in the real time I don't see any flickery. Of course the flickery is resulted because of the AC and let's see how much power it just draws. It's too bright here, let me just close it. And for 5 meters, it throws around 48 watts. And I think it's quite nice. It doesn't really draw that much power. And also, well, it's quite bright here as well. And for the next test, I will just solder these two together. Because on the regular LED strips, there is a voltage drop. And if the LED strips became too long, well, beginning of the strip and end of the strip doesn't have the same amount of illumination. So let's test that next. I have connected the LED strips and carefully laid them down on the hole. Because obviously you don't want to blow out the mains fuse. Then I connected it to a regular power outlet. On the beginning of the strip it is 230 volts AC. And at the same at the end of the LED strip as well. So almost no voltage dropout. And the brightness is constant. And I will cut some with the scissors. And check their intended use. And leave it open and check how much heat that we can see after an hour. It looks pretty bright because light is directly looking towards the camera. In real life it's not that bad. But let's see how hot it will get after an hour. Okay. So it takes around one hour and I connected this one, this thermocouple bolt on the resistor has been stabilized around 36 Celsius. So it is good enough. But 
Well, as you see, well, even if I do this, it will reduce because, you know, it's in open air and I think it's pretty safe to say that it's quite suitable for this application. But as of curiosity, I will also check and um, I will also check it in the rectifier and also on the LEDs. So I'm checking the temperature levels on one of the LEDs, but it's more or less on the saturation. For example, even if I am talking right now directly to the LEDs, the temperature will drop because there is an airflow. But I think now uh, this temperature levels are quite safe to work with. One thing last left is the temperature levels on the rectifiers. So reach rectifier is around 31 degrees Celsius reaches saturation. You can see it even if, for example I talk directly to the LEDs, the temperature will actually fluctuate. So even if I for example do like this, it will reduce. And it's safe to say that these LEDs are safe when they are open to the air like this. Of course, you shouldn't touch them if you don't want to get a nice zap. I designed a lightning fixture for 3D printing in FreeCAD, which I plan to mount it in a wall. Since it doesn't need an LED driver, it is quite easy to install. But I let some space for an LED driver, so you can reuse it in case you want to do so. Light is not that strong, but suitable for auxiliary lightning. And also it diffuses better than what I captured in the camera. I have made a few modifications to the model. I installed one into the bathroom and behind the mirror as well. And maybe it can be installed just around the mirror as well. But this area is easier to touch and I don't want to get zapped or someone else to get zapped as well. And it's pretty open actually. If water just comes here, it might be dangerous. So it may not be the best idea to install around the mirror. Since it was quite easy to install, I cut one piece and installed behind the desk. And time will tell if it is a good idea or not. But well, at least it is looking nice at the moment. And I installed some of them behind the cabinets. They are not strong enough to be your main light source. But for the accessory lightning, it's pretty nice.